We got to record. All right. So um, first thing I want to go over before we go over into like sectors and everything like that um, and look at, you know, some plays, I'm just going to quickly move through something. Uh, so over the weekend, somebody was asking, I can't remember who it was, was asking about Nirvana's and Holy Grails or whatever. Right. So i um, just going to go through a quick run through of, let me get rid of this. Let me get rid of the ICT stuff. Boom. Okay. So just a quick run through of the strat. Um, Holy Grail, first off, is a 3-1. Three, 3 is an outside candle. That signals aggression, either to the buy side or the sell side. In order for a 3 to become a 3, it first starts out as either a 2 up or a 2 down. Hence the aggression. Because if it's a 2 up and then eventually the bears take it down, they have to come in force and come with aggression to the sell side to bring that down. Same vice versa, if it's a bullish uh, three, it started as a two down and then it reversed. A three candle is a broadening formation on a smaller time frame, right? Because a broadening formation, what is it essentially? It's an expansion of higher highs and lower lows. So obviously a three, it expands, right? Making a lower low and, and also makes a higher high. So uh, first thing that we would do, you know, if it were me, I'm obviously going to, you know, set up my broad information, see where I am in the range, right? So, boom, there you go. Come back to that. Oh, shit, wrong one. There you go, boom, right? So, your broad information should look like a megaphone, right? Starting off small and then showing the expansion of price, right? And it should continue to expand. And again, as I've said in multiple different um, Zoom sessions, um, you can have more than one broadening formation, okay? I like to draw mines, you know, kind of wide um, because, you know, from a swing standpoint, I might hold from one end to a broadening formation all the way uh, potentially to the other. If there are any questions, please don't hesitate to put it inside of the chat as well too. So now that we have that, how should you be playing a holy grail? Honestly, it, it's very simple, right? So first you mark out on the inside candle, you mark out your entries, right? So that's daily entry to the upside. And then this is daily entry to the downside. Why are you not? Here we go. This is daily entry to the downside. Now, what should your targets be? Strat wise, pure strat wise, your first target, your target should actually be the high and the low of the three, depending on which way that it triggers, right? So First magnitude is up here. Second magnitude is down here. Sorry, not second, but first magnitude to the upside is up there. First magnitude to the downside is up there. So whichever way it triggers, um, that's going to be your target, right, on the, on the daily, the 275. Obviously, if you're swinging, you can hold for longer, in which case you would, you know, target this high, target that high, target that high, target that high. But for the interest of the uh, exercise, right, um, strat-wise, that would be your first target up here at the top. If it breaks to the upside, that would be your first target right here. So what we're looking for is a two up to the upside or a two down to the downside, right? Um, let's see what happens next. So we do get that two up, right? We trigger and actually we end up hitting the target. Now, one or two things can happen. Either A, you get exhaustion on this two up candle, which should give you a signal that potentially this is going to turn into a rev strat, a one, two, two rev strat. A rev strat is, again, a one followed by a two up followed by a two down. That's a bearish rev strat. A bullish rev strat is a one followed by a two down followed by a two up. If you think about it in ICT terms, it is accumulation followed by manipulation. Wait, let me draw it out. Accumulation followed by manipulation, followed by distribution. That's to the bearish side. And again, from the bullish side, accumulation, followed by manipulation, followed by distribution, right? That's a rev strat. In this case, I'm not really sure. I don't really think it's going to um, end up being a rev strat, considering that's a pretty solid candle. We did hit target. We did exhaust a little bit off of it. But I'm willing to think that since we're coming from the lows and you know we made a low here and then we just made a higher low, I think we're probably going to continue pushing. We'll see what happens next. All right. Yep. We, we good, right? We actually ended up taking out 
uh, what, one, two, three, four targets, right, with that next candle. So at this point, if, if your target was a 275, you're up at 281, and um, you should be good, right? You could take your profit here. It's a solid candle, so you can choose to hold on to it. But if you have multiple contracts at this point, trim, right? Especially if you're in a good, you know, 50, 60%. Probably higher, actually. Um, if your if your strike was 275, you're probably definitely higher, right? So what happens next? We get a two up. All right. Now, where would your exit be, right? So if you didn't take your exit of hitting your targets, and this is why it's important that you go on with the plan, right? Your first target was here, second, third, fourth, fifth. Usually by the time it hits your fifth, I mean, if it's hitting your third, fourth, and fifth target, you should have at least trimmed. You probably should have you know, taking profit and exited the trade. But let's say you didn't. Once this two gets that reversal, you would exit once this two crosses the low of this two up. That's when you would exit. If you hadn't exited once it hit your profit, right? And I'm saying that to say that a lot of people will hold through. They're like, oh, well, it's just, you know, it's going to continue. And it very well may. But this could end up being, you know, just making that higher high which it did, it did make slightly a higher high. So now you can actually draw, even though it's probably not gonna be like super significant, you can actually draw another broad in the form rate. Actually, no, that one's lower. Let me see, hold on one second. It's so close, 281.22. Yeah, so never mind. It, it is a broad in formation, right? So once that high gets taken out, I'm sorry, was somebody trying to say something? Okay, guess not. Um, once that high gets taken out, so now you've made another broadening formation, and there's ex um, there is potential for a you know a pullback, not necessarily a reversal, but it could be a retracement, right? But let's see how I play. Yeah, see, so some people would have been, oh well, let's just pull back to fill this gap. Nope, it took you all the way back into the mother bar range. I'll explain what mother bars are, like you know the concept of that later, but. It took you right back into that. And then, yeah, see? And this is where, and this is not to point blame or like get on people, but this is usually where, where y'all fuck up. The ones who hold, right? When you should have gotten out, you hold through all of this thinking, oh yeah, it's eventually gonna, you know, continue back up. But you end up, look at this, it ends up hitting your stop loss, your original stop loss where it should have left. Right. But anyway, you get the point of it. That's how you would play a holy grail. Um, if I could just go back to this, that's how you would set it up. Right. Have your entries, your inside candle entries. Um, also, just be aware of that, you know, with three candles, sometimes they could get stuck in a range. So, you know, if, if it goes up and then like it's just hitting the three and then reversing, I would say get out because it's going to be, it might be stuck in a mother bar range. Mother bars are normally threes. When you have such an expansion, usually price um, tends to consolidate afterwards and just stay inside the mother bar range until again, you get the subsequent manipulation, then distribution, or um, again, manipulation and then distribution back to the downside. All right. So that's how you do three ones. If there's any questions about that, please don't hesitate to ask. Now, another thing, um, the next example I'm going to show you is the Nirvana, how you would chart that out, um, what your target would be, et cetera, and then we'll go from there. I do want to say this, um, with strat setups that you guys are looking for, there is no one setup that's better than the other. Some people may have favorite setups, and some people may feel more comfortable with uh, certain setups, but there is no strat setup that I would say is like 100% better than the other one. You know what I mean? Um, Nirvanas are the reverse or the opposite. You start off with an inside candle followed by the expansion, right? So again, the accumulation, right, is the inside candle or consolidation. Strat-wise, we think of inside candles as consolidation candles. Nobody's in control. Um, followed by in this case, manipulation, right? It started out as a two up and then pulled back down and went three once it took out the low of this inside candle. So really simple on the Nirvana, your target, excuse me, your entries would be here. 
That's your entry to the upside. That's your entry to the downside. Your targets would honestly be the next low, right? For me, since there's a swing low here, I probably would target that and put that as that. And the other target would be up here as well. But again, because I'm a swing trader, I'm probably going to be like using targets on the weekly, to be honest with you. Um, probably not going to be like just targeting like the next daily target. This is if you're like day trading or, or whatnot. But either way, it still translates, right? Um, honestly, I probably would be targeting somewhere up here if it were me, right? Because we know SPY's ATR, you know, at the time was $1.71. We're actually looking back at... 2003 in SPY, wow, time machine. So anyway, um, essentially same thing, right? You're looking, if it triggers to the upside, you take calls. If it triggers to the downside, you take puts. Remember, you don't have to be the first one in. Um, you can, you know, let it trigger and then see if it comes back to retest. And then, you know, you can jump in there. Let's see what happens. All right, so we do get the trigger. We're looking for the 132, either to the upside or to the downside. We did get that trigger. We didn't quite hit... Uh, we did hit first target. The technically the first target's there, second target there, third target there. Um, my target for swing trading probably would have been up here. So let's see what happens next. All right, we still in. We're still good, right? The trade hasn't invalidated. Yep, we hit our first target. At this point, uh, you can either trim or again, if you feel in froggy, you could probably see if it hits the next target. And again, this is what happens when you hold through. Hits your target, get out. You live to fight another day, right? Some people, again, would hold through this and then luck got lucky, right? Because it could have could have went south, right? But good. Either way, so actually, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, rewind. Let me come back. I would say if you have multiple contracts, trim at this point or take full profit. If you trim and let runners do their thing, then you could be stress free during this pullback. And now the runners are doing their thing. Let's see what happens. Yeah, so probably would have just taken, honestly, for me, I probably would have. Once I saw that I got four candles and we're seeing the exhaustion like that, I'm probably taking profit at that point. Um, and yeah, that's essentially how you play the one three. Does it ever come back? Oh, it really? Oh, yeah, it comes back. Well, I guess it depends on how much time you have on your runners. But honestly, I probably wouldn't have held through this, this type of a drop. I probably would have uh, left it. And then once I got this inside candle here, probably take that trigger back to the upside as well too. All right. So that's how you play three ones. That's how you play one threes. Three one is the Holy Grail. Um, one three is their Nirvana, is their, excuse me, is their Nirvana setup. Um, I also wanted to show, ah, perfect. We actually have a perfect example here, right? I wanted to show like when you have that three candle, right? Um, and you get that inside candle, right? Boom. We got a three one over here, right? So boom. And then boom. I'm just gonna mark it out instead of like wasting time with labeling it and stuff, right? So boom, those targets, targets. I just want to show. All right, so we got three one exhaustion on both candles from the upside, right? So next we end up with a three, one, two to the downside. And again, exhaustion on all three candles, right? So um, when you get that three, one, two to the downside, you know, some people may think, oh, well, we're getting exhaustion. We can continue, you know, heading down, even though it was a it was a bullish two, there's still exhaustion. Look at where we close. We couldn't close higher than where um where the original three opened. So, you know, probably gonna continue heading down. We're at the top of the range. I get that this is bullish, so you know, but we definitely have room to drop. Let's see what happens. Boom. One, two, two, rev strat. The three, one, two turns into a one, two, two rev strat, right? Even though it's not a pretty one, this two down was your manipulation, right? The two down took out the lows, right? And then came right back up. So that's your manipulation. And now we get the two up. Now it's not displaced above the three. So technically we still do have mother bar issues, but when you got above the three, you probably could have taken profit somewhere up here. Uh, let's see what happens next. Yeah, see, so, and then we get another rev strat, the manipulation. Matter of fact, a lot of people probably would have got after throughout this whole process. 
right? If, if, if they did not do right by taking profit, you know, when they could. If you would have held through this or whatever, you would have went calls, then it would have reversed on you again, right? The first time you're thinking, oh, well, it, you know, went two down, so let me go ahead and take whatever. Probably would have got messed up on this candle. Then it went two up, so, oh, okay, we're thinking calls now. Wrong. We right back down to the puts. So much manipulation in this sequence right here. All right, let me see, was that for me? Oh, that's, that's uh, open this one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so with that being said, let's go ahead and clear out the bar replay. Yes, I want to exit bar replay, clear out all of that stuff. And then I want to come back all the way up to the top. So we will start with, actually, let's go to futures. <clears throat> so looking at it on the daily, right, with the futures, a um, couple of things I do want to point out. Let's go here. So we already have um, so far, right, on the Dow, on the on the daily. Let me clear everything. Clear. Okay. So far on the Dow on the daily, we already have market structure that's broken to the downside. So at this point, what we're looking to see is if price trades back into this fair value gap and then rejects and continues down. If it blows through this fair value gap, more than likely it is coming back for external range liquidity up here at 42.13. All right. Um, but, you know, again, if it does not clear this fair value gap, more importantly, this uh, previous low, which should act as resistance now it's probably going to continue heading down. Q's on the other hand, look obviously a little bit stronger. However, there is still the same potential, let me zoom in, still the same potential for exhaustion risk. All right, we are at the top of the range, one, right? We have the top of our broadening formation, that's one. Two, we end up with that three, one, two to the upside, but as you can see, we are exhausting um, from this high, right? We, you know, we haven't really hit the three just yet, but we're exhausting from the high. So we're still inside of the range of the mother bar with the three, but so far after taking out this high, we're exhausting. Now, will that change? We shall see. This could end up, I'm just, I'm not telling you it's gonna go down, but this can end up, I want you to be careful because this can end up being a one, two, two rev strat back to the downside. So you do want to be careful on that, looking at it on the daily, right? We already took out external range liquidity over here. We took out this high as well too and made a higher high. So when that happens, again, what's above the highs? You have buy stocks. How do you know if we reached exhaustion? The wicks on the candles? When you see a wick like when you see a wick like this, right, that resemble that can signify exhaustion from the upside. And then if you see a wick, um, and it's been so long since Spy has ah here, right? You get a wick here, right? Ideally, what you're looking for is a shooter and a hammer, hammer from the downside to reverse up, shooter from the upside to reverse down, but Again, when you get this type of exhaustion, and for me, like seeing when it takes out previous highs, right? Took out previous high over here, took out previous high over here. What's above that? If you watch ICT's videos, he always talks about buy stops being above. When highs get taken out, there's buy stops there, right? There's people, there's, um, there are bulls that probably got in down here and they're taking profit up here, right? Buy low, sell high, right? So you get that exhaustion and you get that potential selling pressure. And again, um, am I saying for sure we're gonna sell off? No, I'm just saying that you need to be aware of that. For all we know, we may very well come back to test this previous high at 1923, right? And then we might drop, okay? So just putting that out there. All right, um, now coming into ES, kind of the same setup, kind of, 
right? We have taken out the highs. There's the top of our range, but we took out the previous highs here. But as you can see, we could not displace above it with this three. Since that point, I want you guys to pay attention to the open of this candle and see if price can displace above it. In my opinion, if price cannot displace above this candle and then more importantly, this one, actually not even there yet. If it can't displace back above the previous highs, that it took out, then you're probably gonna end up with exhaustion. And then again, you have a 312 setup, right? But again, that 312 setup can turn into a 122 rev strat back to the downside. One up, one, two up, followed by a two down. All right. And again, more, more than likely, what you wanna do is chart out where can price fall back down to? Well, we have a fair value gap down here. Right, I don't know if it's gonna drop all the way down that far, but we do have a fair value gap here. We have a very tiny one down here, but again, as ICT talks about, that price may skip over the first fair value gap to get down to the larger one uh, before reversing. Um, now, uh, I'm gonna take a page out of Biker's book and probably, I don't know if somebody's trying to talk, if you are, you know. I'm, I don't, dude, if you're trying to talk, it's not working. Yeah, I'm sorry. If you're trying to talk, it's not working. Sorry. Um, let me see the chat real quick. Okay, that was Ellis. All right, cool. All right. Um, and then, yeah, what you could do is even draw the fibs out and kind of see, you know, where price could fall back down to if we do get that type of retracement, right? So we got the equilibrium is here right now we're at premium because we're above the equilibrium at uh five one six six right five thousand one six six right um it could drop down and honestly i would say i would if i were a betting man i would say if price were to come back down to retrace it would come back down into this fair value gap why because this is where the 0.618 is as well too in between the um equilibrium and also the 0.618 then yeah, I can see price dropping back there before continuing to you know bounce back up. And again, this would be completely healthy, right? This is not something where I'm like, oh, the market's gonna crash or whatever. No, this would be no different than what we saw over here. After making higher highs, right? Because if you forget this for a second, at this point in time, this was the highs. What did what did um, uh, price do after making those highs? If I'm not, yeah, after making those all-time highs, it pulled back. It pulled back, right? So who's to, what's, who's to say that price is not going to do the same thing over here? After making higher highs, exhaustion, and therefore the reversal, all right? Um, and I do want to point out, now, it didn't do it eventually, but these, and again, this is not an official strat setup or whatever, but that double outside, and we get it over here, right? We get a double outside over here. What did, what did SPY do after the, um, excuse me, what did ES do after that? It dropped, right? Here again, it didn't do it immediately because we, we were bullish on the next candle, right? But we get the double outside over here uh, same way too, right? Again, we didn't drop immediately, but yeah, we might drop. We definitely might drop. And I'm not implying that double outsides always mean a drop. I'm implying that double outsides, usually after double outsides, there's a pretty explosive move or very decisive move, I should say, right? Um, I forget when it happened, but look back at crowds charts. As a matter of fact, Netflix is, an, is another one as well. I mean, hold up. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Netflix, that was what triggered the run up, or at least that was like the beginning of it, right? So let me clear everything out real quick. Let me see if I can find it. It was on the daily. Ah, there you are. Actually, this might be another one, not the original one. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is back in April. Okay. Yep. Double outside, right? First, you get a bearish um, outside candle, then you get um, a bullish one, and then that sparks that run, right? So from here, imagine from a swing trade, if your entry would have been down here at 560, right? And you would have gotten, I don't know, 600s, 650s, whatever, right? Boom. Held that all the way up to there. 
that's funny. Consolidation. Of cons well, anyway. Um, so yeah, just showing that out, right? Okay, coming back into, let's look at SPY first. So now that you looked at ES and now that you looked at NQ and we looked at SPY is kind of showing something similar to the same thing as ES, right? We have that big three candle that took out previous highs over here as well. So um, again, we're looking for the 312 either to the upside or to the downside, right? Whichever one happens, it is what it is. I would just say, even though it's not guaranteed, watch out for the potential manipulation. Um, if I were a bull, I would want it to go 312 to the downside first, and then I want to see that distribution back to the upside. If I were a bear, I just want it in reverse, right? Go 312. More importantly, we do not displace above the three, right? If you go 312 up, we don't displace above the three, and we're seeing exhaustion, excuse me, and we're seeing exhaustion um from like it, it gets to the gets to the high of the three and we're seeing exhaustion um in my opinion i'm not gonna say it's like yeah 100 but in my opinion we probably gonna drop that was probably the manipulation right yeah sorry but... i'm sorry oh okay yeah okay um we probably gonna get the manipulation and then we're probably going to see the distribution to the downside. All right. So just be prepared for that. Now, if it, again, if it goes 312 to the downside, but it does not clear. And when I say clear, I mean, uh, when I say clear, I mean displaces. And I mean, when I mean by displacement, I mean the body of the candle closes below this three. If it comes down and it's wicks, off of the off of the uh, the low of the three, again we're probably going to see a run up, especially if it closes this gap over here. If price closes that gap over there, you see it, right? If it closes that gap over there, my bad for messing up the arrow. Then if it closes that gap and wicks off of it, right, ends up being like a hammer, then we're probably going to see a one two two rev strap back to the upside, right? So. I'm not telling you for sure this is what's going to happen, but do you understand how I'm piecing together? If the market does this, I'm going to do that. That's how fluid and adaptable you need to be with your trading plan. And why I always say, don't be married to your bias, right? Because a lot of y'all are going to be like, oh yeah, we bearish, we bearish, we bearish, we bearish, right? Only for it to go through one. So yeah, yeah, we still bearish, we still bearish. Nope, it continues up. And the whole time you waiting on that bearishness to kick in, you could have been making money on the call side. All right. The market is an ever changing, ever flowing um, thing. So you have to flow with it. All right. What do I see on the hour? Um, I'm be honest, Doug. Like I'm a swing trader, so I don't really go into the hour, but yeah, sure, we could, we could definitely take a look. Um so looking at the, it's inside as well too, right? So what I would probably say, what I'm noticing just off of, off, you know, off rip is the fact that we are, you know, any candle, we have four candles in a row that have tried to take out this previous high at this two and couldn't do it. Now we did get that pullback, right? We got the one, two, two restaurant and then we're exhausting from the downside. So again, this inside candle might go 212 reversal to the upside, right? For me right now, the way it's looking, yeah, it's still looking, I would say it's still looking um, bullish, but I would want price to displace above this previous high. We saw that it tried to do it on the two and it couldn't, excuse me, it tried to do it on the two and it just couldn't do it. Actually, let me put everything back. <clears throat> All right. So it tried to do it on the two and it couldn't do it, right? You do have, um, if I'm not mistaken, relative equal highs up here, right? So that's going to be something. And again, this is something that I want you to pay attention to. If price starts struggling around here at 530, um, at the 530 level, if it starts struggling around there, yeah, we we might we might drop. If it struggles and, and you get in wicks and potentially a shooter, we might drop, all right? 
But um, for right now, it's an inside candle. With inside candles, it can go both ways. I don't care if the candle is green or red. Inside candles, there's nobody in control. So you need to chart it out and have a game plan for both sides of it, right? If it goes two on two to the downside, where could we potentially bounce? We might bounce at this gap fill. If it goes two on two to the upside, a two on two reversal to the upside, where can we find resistance? You might find resistance here. You might find resistance up here. As a matter of fact, with this turtle soup, you might find resistance really here with that turtle soup at 531. So there's a lot of points of resistance also up here, right? So like, let's say, you know, we just get some straight bullishness tomorrow, right? And we just blast through this resistance. You might catch resistance up here. And again, what is above the highs, especially all-time highs, buy stops. Remember, the concept is simple for the algos. It is buy low, sell high. The concept is simple. So they're not going to continue buying at all-time highs. Retail might. And that's when, uh, what does it sound say? Uh, you'll be the liquidity. Right? So anyway, um, that's that. For I didn't, Damn, I did not mean to spend so much time on the spot. My bad, y'all. I need to like set a timer or something. Um, all right. So let's clear out all this stuff. Clear, clear, clear. Did I accidentally remove the damn it? My bad. Hold up. There we go. Remove the drawing. That's what I meant. Okay. So same thing with the cues. Cues obviously look a little bit stronger, but again, you have you're in all time high territory. Okay. I'm gonna say I'm gonna tell it to you like how Sarah Strat um Sarah Strat Sniper talks about it. When you are at all time highs, there's really nobody else for the bulls to go long against. There's no targets to to pick out. Right. When you're at all time highs. Yes, you can use the fibs or whatever, but there's no targets to take out. Right. So we actually get our consolidation or accumulation here. This was the manipulation move. And now we've distributed above previous highs. So, again, up here, there's potential for exhaustion. So what I it's the same thing that I said about when we were looking at spy with the three one. You have to have a game plan, right? Either it's going to go um, again. 312 to the downside or or 31 oh my bad or 312 uh just let me start over or 312 to the downside right 312 to the upside or 312 to the downside all right if you have a second could you chart Pfizer I like it to the down Pfizer no just joking yeah we can chart Pfizer now I will say if the market, if tech goes bearish, right? Because let's be real, tech is really what's driving the market. Look at sectors like, and I haven't charged them out, but look at sectors like XLV, look at sectors like XLP, look at sectors uh, like XLI, um, materials as well too. Look at, look at those sectors because as tech goes down, those sectors tend to do well, okay? Energy, sorry, that's that's the other one. I, I knew there was one I was missing. Those sectors tend to do well when tech is not doing so good. Remember, the money does not disappear. It just flows into a different sector, all right? Um, but anyway, so that's, uh, I'm not going to go over it in depth because I just went over SPY, but that's what you're looking for. If we get a break to the upside or to the downside, you're looking to see if we can get displacement above the mother bar right, either above or below the mother bar. If we can get that displacement, then more than likely the move is going to continue to happen, right? So if we get displacement, a 312 with a displacement above the three, we're more than likely going to continue pushing up um, and continue to displace up because, uh, not because, displace up creating more fair value gaps and vice versa to the downside as well too. If we can get displacement to the downside, then again, we're, we're more than likely going to continue creating fair value gaps. Me personally, if we do get the drop, I would like to see it fall back into a fair value gap. Again, uh, with ICT, um, prices usually moving from external range to internal range, and then from internal range back to external range. Internal range, again, is the fair value gaps. External range is the highs and the lows. All right. All right, so with that being said, um, not every single sector I want to look at, but I think XLC, if I'm not mistaken, 
Right. So we got the Holy Grail on XLC. Same thing. I'm not going to chart it up, but again, treat it the same exact way. What I do like about XLC is that we've already um, we've already traded back into a fair value gap. And as you can see, we filled it. And then what happened? We bounced off of it. More importantly, we stayed above this previous low, which once we get below it, once um, once we broke market structure to the downside, which is what we did with this three, um, technically this should have continued to act as resistance and um, be a point for price to trade back up into and then bounce and you know continue down. But obviously that's not the case of what happened. So I kind of like this to continue up, but again, mark out your targets. Where can price find resistance? So you have all these highs up here where price can potentially find resistance. And yes, these highs may get taken out, but what do you have after that? Exhaustion risk and therefore a potential reversal back to the upside, right? So XLC is one of them. Obviously SMH looking strong as hell. Um, again, you know, not a three one, but we do get the two one. I got to rechart that out. We do get the two one to the upside strong inside candle as well too. Um, so yeah, I would say we're probably going to continue creeping up there. But again, you are already at all time highs. Oh shit, my bad. You are already at all time highs. So you know you may again it may continue pushing up, but again you're at exhaustion risk as well too. So that's something that you should definitely uh, keep in the back of your head and pay attention to. All right, I'm not saying load the boats on puts just yet but you need to be ready for if a move like that were to happen. So XL, I'm sorry, XLC, XLK, you want to chart that out as well too. Um, we're going to take a quick look at XLE if I'm not mistaken. Um, so with XLE, um, trade it back into a breaker block. So I'm kind of interested to see what happens. Um, as you can see, we did take out the previous lows. So whenever you have previous lows taken out, what's below that? Sell stops, right? So there is a potential. I'm not saying it's going to be immediate, but there is a potential on energy. And I'm, and again, this is not immediate, but this is something that again, if you pay attention to it, you can possibly set up your next move, right? So if the market does this, I've already been looking at this ticker. All right, it, it, it's doing my trigger that I wanted to do. Okay, so now we can continue to push, right? So we hit the bottom of the broad information. The only thing that makes me um, halt on potential reversal is that we have not closed above this previous low, still acting as resistance, all right? As you can see, the one candle tried to come back and break through, couldn't really do it. But we do have an inside candle. We are at the bottom of a range. So again, there is potential for a 212 reversal back to the upside. And again, I'm, I'm only going on the daily. I, I fully expect you to chart out the weekly, the monthly, et cetera, and get a full picture. But just based on the daily, you get what I'm saying? What's the name of the indicator that is drawing gray lines for your swing? Oh, that's super order blocks right here. Super order block, super order block, FBG, BOS tool. Um, let me see, which one is it? Because I took a lot of, oh, plot pivots. Make sure pivots are checked. All right. All right. So that's that. All right. Uh, what was the name? I'm sorry. I'm trying to do this off of memory. I did XLE. It was XL, XLE, XLC, SMH. There are others, but the ones that stuck out of my head, was it, was it XLP? No, it might have been XLV. XLP, look, we... Right. Okay, so I think so with XLV, um, it that's I did yeah I did mark this out right. It it is looking weak right. Um, it's in the middle of a gap fill, so more than likely it's probably gonna fill this gap first. And I'm gonna still chart out your Pfizer for who's that Sada. I'm still gonna chart out your Pfizer for you, but um, on the daily alone. Right. What happened? This is exactly what I'm telling you to, you know, look out for on SPY and, and the cues. Right. What did we do? We broke a previous high. This is your exhaustion risk. Who was it that asked me that question? Was it Ellis? 
Uh, how do I know? Right. So there's your exhaustion right there. Right. We we broke a previous high. And as you can see, we can we barely can keep above it. Right. The body keeps coming back in. All you're seeing is wicks at the top. Right. So there is your broadening formation. Therefore, you get the potential for the reversal. You're not quite a shooter, but you get a three two reversal. You take that entry to the downside and now we're in a gap. So, again, that gap is more than likely going to fill what you're looking for is again, price is probably gonna come back down to um, take out this low down here, the 143.11. And then maybe you might have a potential for a reversal. If not, price is probably gonna trade back into this um, BSG, which stands for a, a, structure, a break structure gap. But in other words, a fair value gap that broke structure. In this case, this is a fair value gap that broke structure to the upside. So price is probably going to come back into it. What is this? Oh, no, 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 no. Thank you, though. I know you're trying to. I'm like, <laughs> I had looked at some sectors over the week, and I just didn't write them down. I know all the sectors, though. I, I appreciate that, though. <laughs> I appreciate it. I just couldn't remember which sectors that stuck out to me the most is what I'm. That's what I was saying. But, yeah, I've, I actually have all that shit memorized in my head, really. Um. And yeah, XLP, the same thing. So this is what makes me think like the Qs could probably continue going. SPY could probably continue going up a little bit. But I'm not going to say and be like, yeah, yeah, we're definitely going to run forever. I think what we'll see is that, yeah, some of these sectors that move kind of inversely to tech, you're probably going to see them come down and sweep lows, right? Either come down and sweep the low or probably come down into this breaker block here on the daily. And that's where we'll probably see the bounce and the reversal. Because if you really look at it, we're still in an uptrend, right? From this point here, we've been making, from this swing low, we've been making higher lows. All you're seeing here is a retracement, right? That's all you're seeing. So when you get that retracement, um, you're looking for potential areas of where you can see, where you can get exhaustion and then a reversal back to the upside. In this case, I'm looking at this low. I'm also looking at this area, which is a breaker block on the daily. All right. Um, and let me just draw the fits. Right. So, and yep, see, we're approaching, we're approaching equilibrium as well too. So yeah, I would say, and then you got the breaker block that's in the area of the 0.618 and the OTE entry as well too. So yeah, if price drops down here, I'm probably looking at that for a potential swing back to the upside and I'm probably targeting this previous high. Right, so price drops down to 75, I target the 78, probably grab the 80 call, catch it on the run back up, if that makes sense. All right, so anyway, again, not gonna go over every single sector, but you know, these are- Tomorrow, um, tomorrow I'm looking for QQQ to run to 460, 461. With the way NVIDIA raging right now, I can see that shit happening, but I don't want people to stay in that shit long. Because that shit is going to come down. Right. So um, let me, hold on a second. Where you said 460. Yeah. So if, if you're anywhere, anywhere above this 460, there's going to be potential for exhaustion. Now, it would be very interesting to see how tomorrow closes. Right now, we're running up in the pre-market. And I hopefully y'all y'all got memory. Because remember, we did the same thing when NVIDIA's earnings came out the next day. What happened, right? In the pre in the pre market, we ran it up, and then what happened as soon as market opened, drop. Right. So just be prepared. If you um, if you are not in Nvidia, an uh, Nvidia swing, do not jump in that shit in the morning. You will become liquidity. I guarantee you. Even if the shit runs up another forty dollars, I advise y'all not to get next to it. Because what's gonna happen is that um that you know, it's going to start, how you say that shit? You know, it's going to start, like, exactly. creeping to the... Yeah, but not only that, it's going to push up, but it's not going to really deliver the price to the target. Ah, yes, 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 yes. So um, that's referring to what the institutional sponsorship. If you see in, like, so if we get large volume candles, and I'm talking about closing, I'm not talking about in, in the beginning when the when the market opens. I'm talking about... If we close with a large candle that displaces above the three, 
yeah, we're probably going to continue high. Okay. But if we, if again, we take out the three, but then we close below the three, it may not be Wednesday, but I would say at some point we're probably, we should probably expect to drop. All right. It, it could be this week. And here's why I'm saying. Also, I would don't, do not um, try to short NVIDIA either, either when it's rediscovering price. And what I mean by that is going to areas that it, it has never been before. Like, do not short that shit. Um, I know that shit gonna look juicy, but just leave that ticker alone. Stick to, you know, your AMDs, your moves, and, you know, AMATs and QCOMs and, you know, stuff like that. Don't, I, do not touch in video. Like, if you're not a trader that been messing with it, just stay away from it. Just notice what it's doing or whatever. I mean, you're going to see a lot of people making money, even people in this Discord. You're going to see that happen, but just leave that shit alone. Remember, it's it's not about it's not about quantity. It's about quality. Um, I maybe it was Manoli who said it, where like you know people think they have to trade every single day, but by and so you trade bad setups, and by the time you get the good quality setup, you've exhausted the majority of your buying power. So sometimes all it takes is just one trade in that one week. You don't have to trade every single day. I promise you, you really don't, all right? You can wait for that one good setup. And ideally for shorting in video, what you would want is um, for price to drop and then trade back up into a, a bearish fair value gap, reject that and continue down. That's when you would take your short. I know a lot of people like, oh yeah, yeah, they're itching to go get shorts right now. And hey, if it's your money, right? But Sal's talking about not being a part of that liquidity because there could be some craziness that goes on up here before it eventually makes either the move to the downside or the move to the upside. You don't want to get caught up in that theta decay. Remember, we are working with a shortened week. All this right here, <clears throat> this this run up in itself is a manipulative move. I would everybody going to be like, because everybody about to think that we about to run crazy and that's not about to happen. Which, I mean, it, the market could run up five, six hundred points tomorrow. But I'm willing to bet the the, the middle part of the week, this shit going to drop crazy. And right, you're gonna have one of those. It's, it's more important about how the week finishes, right? Like anything oh, yeah. can happen in the beginning part. But if that week no, don't on finish, the flip side, energy. On the, flip, on, the, on the flip side, you can make all your money and just don't trade the rest of the week either, too, though. That too. That's that's what I was gonna say. If you're in calls and you made your money, don't try to like. Okay, let me put it like this: is not the week to be greedy. This ain't the week. Matter of fact, there's really no week to be greedy. But this ain't the week to be greedy. Okay, you got Feds talking. You have a shortened week, so there may not be a lot of volume to begin with, right? You have a shortened week, and we're at the end of the month which means that there's probably going to be some positions closed because of the end of the month and reshuffled into other positions, right? Which means that you can, VIX, VIX could do some things this week. I'm gonna just say that, VIX can do some things this week. I hope every single one of you has VIX on your radar this week. It should be on your radar every week, but. I hope every single one of you got VIX on your radar. And before you decide to enter anything, consult with VIX, consult with futures, and consult with spy in the cubes. All right. And make sure that you're entering in with the same flow as the market sentiment. Hope that makes sense. All right. Okay. <clears throat> with that being said, uh, there are a couple of tickers. So let's start off with. Alan Fair. All right, so I had already charted it out, so please forgive me. Starting off on the weekly, I'm not going to go into every single thing. Um, I did chart out the monthly fair value gap. So with Palantir, we are we traded right long institutional sponsorship bulls definitely stepped in right? Gave us that push to make higher highs. Now we are getting that retracement 
back into this fair value gap, the monthly fair value gap. We have traded back into the 50% consequent encroachment of the monthly fair value gap. So there is a potential for us to start um, bouncing back to the upside. We have a double inside on the week after going three. We This is still mother bar issues, all right? We could not displace below the low of the mother bar. Ideally, what I would want to see on the week, I would want to see these lows get swept, not displacement below the lows. I would, I would want to see the lows get swept, and then we get the reversal back to the upside. That's going to be the algos grabbing liquidity. It's going to be trapping some bears there as well, too. And then we get that reversal back to the upside. So again, just to show, we're looking for, uh, if I'm bullish is what I'm saying, I'm looking for liquidity to get swept, either this low or that low to be taken out. Hold on one second. I have an active chat, then 5.9 kicked me out. I can't deal with this shit right now. Just log back in again. What the fuck? How many times have I said that that chat does not go away? It's going to get reassigned. Shit. Anyway, sorry, y'all. Work related. So the lows, again, I'm looking for the lows to get swept. Um, if we're bullish, and then I'm looking for that reversal back to the upside. If that is the case, then I would probably long-term target that monthly entry, the 25 call. And again, <clears throat> with Palantir, it's a slow mover. So... Um, not a horrendously slow mover, but it's a slow mover. So in which case I would suggest, um, I don't know, getting the 25 call September, October, you know, somewhere around there. I mean, if you want to do it as a leap, fine, but not necessary. But yeah, that's what I would target. Now, if it ends up being um, based on the weekly, if it ends up like trading all the way through, uh, to the downside, then yeah, you probably want to target the end of the fair value gap, probably want to go with uh, 19 put or 20 put and let it trade all the way back down there. Zooming in on the daily, we do have a holy grail setup. So again, what I'm looking for, if I'm bullish, right, I want the manipulation to the downside. I want to see either this low or this low get swept. Same thing that I was illustrating on the weekly. Watch, I want to see that get swept, end up being a 3-1-2 um, a hammer, and then we end up with the potential for a 1-2-2 rev strat back to the upside, which again, if you're not trading months out, you can probably target the uh, 21 call up here and let it run up there, and then you know probably trade into the fair value gap, or at least at the very least trade into this high as well too. Palantir is small account friendly. I wanted to give a concerted effort to um, hopefully it didn't run up in the in the after hours, but I want to give a concern. I wanted to give a concerted effort to looking at uh, small tickers. Um, Sal did put this one on my radar, but yeah, definitely trying to give a little bit more of a concerted effort playing small tickers, alerting small tickers in my channel, um, and kind of leaving the big ticker. I mean, I'll I'll still trade them, but I'm gonna leave the alerts uh, to the unless I see a really bomb ass setup. I'm still going to continue to watch Cost, Netflix, and Adobe, uh, the three that I said that I would watch from uh, the Ferrari watch list. But I think um, with Palantir trading back into, if I'm not mistaken, let's clear this for a second, right? Clear all of this. I can always rechart it. With Palantir trading, yeah, it traded back below equilibrium. As you can see, it just kissed um the point uh, 618 level, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and since that point, it technically has made a higher low, right? Even though that's like kind of the same uh, range, it did make a higher low. So I'm looking for that, um, eventually the bullishness to kind of kick in. That's what I'm looking for. Unless we have a drastic pullback in the market. Um, Airbnb, if I'm not mistaken, was another one. That's all old stuff. All right. so. This is exactly what we're looking for and what I was talking about with SPY and Qs. If, if price drops, right? So we have an uptrend, we have the run up and what we're seeing is a retracement. We see lows got swept and we traded back into internal range liquidity, AKA a fair value gap. So this is ideally what we're looking for. 
we're looking for price to trade back from external range liquidity back into internal range liquidity. And then we're looking for a bounce. And then here we have an inside candle followed by a two down. There's your manipulation. The manipulation will be confirmed if we can get distribution back to the upside and displacement. We're looking for a one to two rev strat back to the upside. Um, again, sweeping the lows, also trading back into a fair value gap, wicked off of that. So we're looking for a one to two rev strat. Um, and again, if you're going, you know, kind of long term, I probably would, you know, um, draw the 50% uh, fib on this uh, large candle and probably use that as a target, to be honest with you, because, you know, obviously that's that's a huge, you know, run up. Actually, well, no, I wouldn't test it. Not for the weekly. You could probably grab something like a month out, go with the 160s or even two weeks out and go with the 160s. But ideally, this is what we're looking for. Right. We took out highs. I'm sorry. We took out highs over here. We made higher highs. There's your double top. Tried again, failed. And now we drop, but we traded back into a fair value gap. Let me also. Even better, OTE entry. It traded right back down into an OTE entry. As a matter of fact, um, ICT wise, you could have taken an entry somewhere in here. And then again, if it if it goes back to the upside, at least clears equilibrium should be some nice profit there uh, for sure. All right, so th that's Airbnb. Um, on the daily, um, we did get the 2-2 reversal. We are exhausting, right? Um, we still have this previous low acting as, let's clear real quick. We do have this previous low, actually this one, my bad. And let me make it white. We do have this previous low acting as resistance, but it is still a 2-2 reversal. So again, that does not mean that, you know, we're gonna continue down. Um, we very well may get a 2-2 a continuation, right? So don't let that de uh, deter you, excuse me. But um, yeah, and then you have a nice little gap fill up here as well too. So yeah, there's definitely some targets for Airbnb, um, you know, to try to take out, right? You got that nice gap fill there. You might find a res some resistance around this previous high at 147. But again, if you give it time, I'd probably like look at the 150s, 155s, um, probably targeting this previous low over here, right? Yeah, so I'll probably say 150s or 155s um, with time and, you know, let it do its thing. But yeah, I definitely like that we have a gap to fill as well too. So yeah, if you put some time on it, I think Airbnb can be, a pretty lucrative and profitable trade. Now, keep in mind, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna trade every single one of these. As a matter of fact, I'm currently at my max trades um, for swings. So, um, just because I don't alert them does not mean don't take them. Just make sure you chart it out um, properly. All right. Before I forget, let's check out Pfizer real quick. Finally, came back from the depths. About goddamn time, Pfizer. All right. So looking at the monthly, um, nice little 322 rep strat. Let me get rid of all the colors so you can see what I'm talking about, right? So on the monthly, right, huge drop off, right? But essentially, what did we do? All we did was we took out lows over here. That's all we did. We traded back in, took out the lows, and then obviously made a lower low, took that out as well, too. There's your manipulation. You get the three candle followed by the two down, followed by the two up. Three, two, two rev strap. This middle two is your manipulation. Grab liquidity. That's it, right? Trap the shorts here. A lot of people probably, once this low got taken out, a lot of retail traders probably went short on this. Grab liquidity. Hence the push on the two, because while it's running up, it forces these people to take uh, cover. And yeah, that adds to the buying pressure. And you definitely got a pivot machine gun over here as well too. So definitely a lot of targets to take out um, over here as well too. So yeah, um, there's definitely some room for Pfizer to go. I would say, you know, mark out your first target. First resistance um, point is going to be that 30 call. I would keep it tight and just go for the 30 call, but I'll probably go a month or two out. Why is this a slow mover?
and it doesn't always cooperate. So yeah, I would say if you're going to do Pfizer, get it a month or two out, the 30 calls is probably relatively cheap anyway. Um, but yeah, see, we took out this high over here. And since that point, we have a little bit of exhaustion. So you may get a little bit of a pullback, but again, that pullback may just trade into this fair value gap right here and then uh, bounce off of that. Or this previous high that should have been resistance may act as support and that the might, you know, price might bounce off of that. Hope that makes sense. All right. Uh, and then, yeah, Pfizer on the daily. Um, hell, we may have already gotten the manipulation, right? Inside candle followed by a two down. So that may be your manipulation. Might turn into a rest trap, a one, two, two rest trap back to the upside. Um, so yeah, if it triggers that high, you can probably take the high. Um, if you're looking to, you know, do something close instead of swing trading. Actually, I probably still would look at the 30 because your target up here is 29.63. But if you want to, you know, get something close to the money uh, when it triggers, yeah, either the 29 call or the 30 call. One out of those two. All right. Hopefully that answers your question. Uh, style was talking, AVGO. You're welcome, Shada. All right. Um, what are we at? All time highs? Yup. All right. So with ABGO, um, honestly, looking at just from the month, I want to see us take this out and displace above it, right? Because it could very well tap back into this 1438 and then reject. Uh, looking at the weekly, I like it though. We got inside candles. So yeah, that could very well turn into that push that we need. Um, what you're seeing here is that, yeah, we took out lows, but more importantly, right, we took out lows and traded right back into a structure big and fair value gap. And as you can see, it's been using that uh, support, right? Once, twice, three times, it's used this fair value gap as support. And that's how you can kind of see like, all right, are we about to have a drop on AVGO? At least not for the time being. Now, again, this is all-time high, so we're talking about potential exhaustion. So I don't want y'all to be like, oh, yeah, go load the boats on AVGO calls. But, uh, yeah, we took out we took out these previous highs over here. Um, now we're targeting, you know, the displace above all-time highs at 1438. And we very well may, right, as an ATR of $42. So we could potentially end up you know, possibly in the 1500s before we see um, that exhaustion, right? Um, but just, again, I want you to be aware of it. So don't be married to the trade. If you see it starting to exhaust and go a different way, I don't give a shit if it continues running after it pulls back. Get out the goddamn trade. Do not hold on to it forever, okay? Again, Four day work week or four day trading week, end of month. A lot of Fed speaking. PC on Friday. You catching my drift? There's a lot. I'm not saying we about to drop, but there's a lot of data points that are coming out that can sway the market. And you don't want to be the one holding the fucking bag when the market reverses. I know a lot of y'all got murdered on NVIDIA's earnings the next day. Be quiet because the damn chat was quiet. Only the same 15 to 20 people was talking. And you could tell they made money because they adapted, but the other, all the rest of y'all, nah, y'all wasn't talking. And I'm not saying you should, I'm just saying I can tell when the, when the group is having a bad day. Because normally people are not quiet when they're making money. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, with ABGO on the weekly, the 212 up is what we're looking for on the daily um, holy grail, right? But more importantly, I like the fact that we swept lows with the three. So I would say because we swept those lows and bounced off of it, uh, again, price is probably coming for the highs, probably. 
You want the three one two up. You want ideally that two, or you want to see price continuing to displace above the three candle, right? So if you take that trigger of the three one two up, and you see price, you know, takes out the three, but it starts exhausting off of that. There is a potential that you might see a reversal to the downside. If we get institutional sponsorship with some displacement, full body, full body candles that close that way, then yeah, we're probably going to continue head up, heading up higher. That's AVGO. Um, I'm not really going to chart NVIDIA because yeah, y'all y'all should already know about that. Uh, there was. Let me check my chart. Let me check my notes. Let's see. Did FedEx kind of play out the way that we wanted? Chart MA. Short. Oh, chart MA, you said? Yeah. You're gonna see you're gonna see exactly why I say chart. On so the monthly we're two two reversal. We're still green for now. Looking at the week, we're at the top of the range, a lot of consolidation. And then we inside candle. But we did sweep lows. So okay, I like that. Um, but we're also, yeah, we also could not get back above these highs over here as well, too. Actually, we really couldn't get back above this previous low over here. But look at that one week and that two week. And then the two week. What are we looking at? Ah, double inside. Yeah, with that double inside. Um Ideally, if we're going to go bull, bullish, I, I want to see this low cleared, right? But as you can see, we kind of been struggling with that, with that double inside. A lot of consolidation, though. So that tells me that we're probably going to have some sort of a manipulation candle followed by the distribution. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Now, I would really like this to the downside, but you write down that broad information and you write that on a bullish fair value gap. So this one could go either way. Now, whichever way it breaks out first, I would wait for the other side and then it create that expansion to the other side. Yeah. I would say um, if it does go like, and the reason why I, I get why, like why Silas take on uh, one spiritness because risk to reward wise, you got a lot of room to the downside, a lot of lows to be taken out to the downside. Right. But um, yeah, I mean, it can also come back up and revisit the highs as well, too, right? Um, let me go back to, let me go over to the daily. Yeah, see, but then on the daily, see, so this kind of helps the, the bearishness as well, too. We got a breaker block that it rejected off of, right? A bearish breaker block that it rejected off of. And then you got that 2-2. Two, two. So we'll see. You actually got a low here as well, too, that um, maybe price wants to take. That might actually be the manipulation move. And then, you know, might come back up to retest uh, the highs. That may actually be the manipulation move. If not, if that gets cleared, then, yeah, we probably come in all the way back down to retest these lows as well, too, for MA. SMCI. Really? Y'all still trading that? I would have thought that people would have got burned enough off of that. <laughs> I love it. All right, let me clear all this shit out. Okay. Uh weekly on the on the month. So we inside month, nothing really yet. But honestly, yo, um I am not sold on bullishness just yet. I'm not because we tried this month. Price tried. It tried to get back up to that thousand mark, couldn't really do it. Um, might just fall back into the spare value gap, right? It's currently in one right now. It currently fell back into this one. But again, as ICT says, that price might actually skip over one to get to the next. But, you know, so far we bounced off of the 50 of the spare value gap. So maybe that holds true. We'll see. Um, looking at the weekly. Yeah, bro. So you have a potential for that 
for a reversal back to the downside. And the reason why I say that on the weekly is because we could not displace above this previous high. We got a three candle followed by a two up, right? Again, that could not displace above the high of the three. So that sets us up for a three, two, two rev strat, three, two, two rev strat back to the downside. I think what you're seeing here is the manipulation to sweep liquidity at the highs only to come down and retest these lows. If you ask me, in my humble opinion, um, I honestly would like, even if SMCI continues up, I honestly would like this to the downside to just keep it at a stack, right? Since this high, this swing high, what's the, what are the facts? We've made nothing but lower highs. Right. So price did try to trade back up into this previous high, couldn't really do it. And then we got exhaustion. We traded uh, back up into this previous high. We get exhaustion. And then it's, you know, coming back to the downside. We'll see what happens. But yeah, um, for SMCI, if it were me, I'm probably thinking puts on it. Even if it, like, if it runs up, like, let's say to take out, you know, these highs up here. I'm probably using that as an entry for puts, especially if I see exhaustion. Just saying. Again, I'm I'm well aware of the fair value gaps, right? The fact that we traded into a fair value gap and then bounced up, well aware of that. Um, but if that, you know, again, if it runs up, then it is what it is. I missed out on it, but I'm probably going to continue to keep looking for an opportunity for puts on it. Uh, oh, last thing, the daily, right? Uh, yeah, so. Yeah, we end up with a 312. So, yeah, again, same thing what I was talking about on SPY, right? If, if it gives you the 312, you know, ideally, we would want to see it displace above the three. Um, you know, if not, if it, start, if it does touch that and starts wicking off of that, because that's also the same place uh, we got a double top here, right? So yeah, you might you might see price like just squeak past that, you know, and then exhaust and then come right back down. If that happens again, if you see price get back up to like 972 and you see it starting to exhaust and like struggle and grind, uh, more than likely it's probably going to continue coming. It's going to reverse and come down more than likely. And in which case, you know, again, target the lows. You got a low here, you got a low there as well, too. And that would be a very, very nice put trade. Extremely nice. Imagine getting it up at like 980, possibly a thousand, for it to run back down to the 750s. Yeah, I think it. All right. So um, let's get so that's really all I got for you. I, I mean, I kind of want to see how, you know, Tuesday opens, um, you know, and does does what it does. Um, I'm going to keep it a stack, though. SMCI, I would not trade it. Um, I know you asked me about it, but I wouldn't. Oh, Pan W, I could look at that. I want to. Um, SMCI, I wouldn't trade it uh, for a couple of different reasons. Um, one, Potential for a lot of manipulation, right? Two, there's no clear direction here. Full-time frame continuity is, is very mixed. Um, Long-term traders are thinking bearish. Swing traders on the month and the week are mixed as well too. And the daily is, is bullish. So honestly, like, um, I probably wouldn't touch it especially at the end of the month, but it is what it is. If you're planning on going out the money, how far would you typically? That depends on where I'm targeting, what time frame I'm targeting on as well, too. Um, and in, I also take into consideration the tickers ATR, the average true range, uh, to make sure that I'm choosing a, re a realistic uh, strike price. So, for example, um, take SMCI. If I'm choosing to swing that, right? SMCI, I know it has the ATR of almost $70 a day, right? So if I trigger two up, right, my target is going to, my first target technically would be up here, the next high, 1,020. 
But from 883 to 972, it's probably going to exhaust its um, average true range. So I'm probably um, not going to take that entry, just keeping it a stack. But let's say I did. Um, 1,020, right? So we're talking about a $30, $40 move. That, it could probably do that in a week, right? So I'm, I'll probably look like a week or two weeks out, right? Um, my next target after that would be what? This at 1,069. And again, keeping in mind the ATR, I'm probably going to look at a strike price again for, you know, 170s, possibly even the 150s. Um, if I want to go short on it, well, shorter, a closer strike, not short. If I want to go with the closer strike, I'll probably, you know, target to 1,050. And again, just taking into consideration the ATR and taking into consideration how much time it might take to get there. Or it's, uh, a ticker like SMCI could do that in two weeks or a month. You know, so I would probably go ahead and go a month out, taking that into consideration. Um, and how far would I go out the money? I would, I, I usually um, pick out targets on the week, depending on the ticker. If it's like a slow moving ticker, I'm probably picking out targets on the month. Um, but yeah, I probably would choose like either the, between the first or the second target. It really depends on the ATR and how fast uh, the target can get um, to the price that I want. Excuse me, how fast the ticker can get to the price that I want. Hopefully that answers your question. But it's more important, like for me, it's about these targets here, the highs, right? If I'm if I'm going calls, um, these are the daily, excuse me, these are the weekly magnitudes. Or even if I was going on the daily, right? Um, my entry would be here, right? First target technically is here at 972. So we're talking about a $70 move from 899 to 972. Again, that could be done in one day. So I'm probably going to target, you know, I like giving time. So I'll probably target uh, the 980s for the following week to give it two weeks worth of time. All right. <clears throat> um, that's really, oh. I keep, man, I keep saying that's really it. My bad. Uh, Palo Alto, Palo Alto, Palo Alto. Uh, Palo Alto is getting ready to drop. Just joking. Um, yeah, nice, um, nice. Actually, this is exactly what we probably want to see if we're bullish on Spire the Qs, right? You get the 3 1 followed by the manipulation. And remember, I said if it starts wicking either around the low or shortly before the low does not displace above it, excuse me, below it, we are probably going to get a reversal back to the upside. This is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. You see how price takes out the inside candle, right? This is going to trap people who are trying to go short. It, it definitely did that. Could not displace below the low of the three. That's your target, right? It takes that would be your entry for the put side. That would be your target. Could not displace below that low, came back up into the range. So that potentially sets us up for a one to two rev strat. So now we're looking for price to continue pushing back up to up to the top, the 380. Obviously, you probably wouldn't want to like go target that for this week. Um and actually let's let's see, where do we? Yeah, 340s, 350s would probably be better, to be honest with you. Um, now, let's look at the weekly. Lovely, lovely um, little hammer on the week, little Momo hammer, right? So this, what happened this week, profit-taking. Profit-taking, that's all. Unless we drop, you know, the following week. But in this week, what this candle is telling me, profit-taking. You have people who probably jumped in down here for calls. Probably targeting somewhere around there. Yep, I'll take it. Right. So, um, yeah, next target, you know, on the weekly would be up here at 369. And again, if that's too far, again, you could probably just do the 50% of this large candle here. Oh, never mind. That's 321. No, that's three. You're already above the 50%. Never mind. Um, 
Honestly, yeah, I probably I would still target the three fifties, not three seventies. Let me see if the daily might give a better better target here. <clears throat> Lovely, right? So the one, um, sorry, not one, two, two. The two, two continuation to the upside um, might find a little bit of resistance up here at 324. Um, and then also, what is this, a gap though? Um, I'm not going to draw it out, but you know that this gap has to get closed, right? So that's going to take you all the way up into the 360s. But you're also going to run into a daily uh, breaker block, right? So you might find a little bit of resistance. Um, honestly, I'd go for the 340s, 350s, in my opinion. Yeah, I'd probably go for the 340s, 350s. All right. Now you might find a little resistance um, in this breaker block range, but yeah, I'd probably go for the 340s, 350s. Uh, give it some time. I know it moves almost $10 a day. Uh, but I'll probably say at the very least, you know, two weeks out. Me personally, I'll probably go a month out. 350s for next month. All right. All right. And that's really all I got. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let it convert. Um, we will probably still have another Zoom session on Wednesday. Uh, you know, kind of see how the market shapes up. But again, um, oh, there is a Fed, I think it's Kashkari, that's talking at 9.55 tomorrow, Eastern Standard Time in the morning. So just be careful, right? He's talking 25 minutes after market open. Swing traders, let that shit sit. Don't do nothing until at least, at the very least, half an hour passes. I would say ideally an hour into the market. Don't do shit until an hour into the market. All right. Anyway, love, peace, and chicken grease. When this thing uh, finishes converting, I'll go ahead and put it in the 10 show weekly Zoom sessions. Um, and again, in the beginning, for those of you that joined late, Stratters, um, I did talk about the Nirvana setup and also the Holy Grail setup in the beginning of the video. All right. Y'all have a great night.